Let's do it. Hi everyone, how are you? Good to see you, hope you had a good weekend. Um, I just have a few updates, I'm gonna hand it over to uh, Director Bond as well uh, for some updates. Um, we have uh, 2,283 cases total uh, today with 91 fatalities in all. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen here for uh, just the update on um, the uh, uh, demographic breakdowns of um, of cases. These are the uh, total COVID positive cases over time, broken down by race, race ethnicity, and a heat map in New Haven. Uh, hospitalizations broken down by race and ethnicity and a heat map, map of where people who have been hospitalized uh, live. And then finally, um, the fatalities broken down by race and ethnicity and where those individuals lived. Uh, Couple quick updates about um, testing. So CVS today um, passed uh, 20, having conducted 20,000 tests at the site on Sergeant Drive. Um, there's been a, a pretty significant and continued uh, interest in that site, uh, which we've been very happy to see. Um, additionally, the city is working to stand up a, a couple of additional sites and we'll likely have announcements on that. Uh, in the next few days. Um, we'll share that with you once it, that gets finalized. Uh, Director Bond, do you have any updates? Yes, thank you, Mayor. So in addition to um, working closely and identifying positive cases and doing the monitoring and surveillance, we have been working in conjunction closely with the Department of Public Health on really trying to um, work on this effort on the point prevalence uh, survey, which is really trying to identify positive cases within the nursing home so that um, they can serve three different cohorting um, efforts, which is separating the positive cases, um, se separating those that are negative, that are asymptomatic residents with no known exposures, um, having then also a area for exposed individuals who are either roommates of COVID-19 positive residents undergoing a 14-day quarantine or symptomatic residents with high clinical suspicion of COVID-19 awaiting test results. And so um, what I have in front of you, uh, some slides so that you can be able to see that. So what we have here, and so this is disclaimer, of course, I like to make disclaimers before on um, presenting any data is as of May 18th and it's con uh, continuously evolving and changing. And so this is as of today, um, what you have is the testing uh, sites for each of the nursing homes that we've been doing some close monitoring for. And what you see is that you see an uh, increase in recent testing, both for advanced nursing and regal care, um, as well as uh, some level leveling for Mary Wade. And so what we wanted to share with you is that last week, Mary Wade um, re and Regal Care, um, as well as the base nursing had some testing and Regal Care tested, um, we tested 87 um, individuals through the partnership of Murphy Medical Associates, of which 14 newly identified positive cases resulted in that. And 13 of those were asymptomatic individuals, which means that they did not have any symptoms, but tested positive. Also with the advanced nursing, um, positive cases, we tested 104 additional individuals of which 22 tested positive and of which all were asymptomatic, meaning they did not have any symptoms and seven are still pending results. And so that will change 
um, but it's by my next reporting period of Thursday. Also, what you have um, here is the staff that has been tested. So there's been a combination of efforts of doing uh, both uh, residents and staff staffing. Um, it, results are as follows. And we also have just in general um, our cases that the uh, positive cases broken down by uh, percentages. 68% um, are resolved. We had 2% are hospitalized and 30% are active at the crime center. Youngest case being 27, max of 98, and then uh, our youngest uh, death was 82 to 94. And then this is the same numbers for uh, Mary Wade. Um, so you can get a glimpse of it from another view. And so this is for Mary Wade, and then this is for the Regal Care Center as well. And so um, advanced nursing has similar data, um, and this is what we've been tracking to ensure that we are working closely with each of the facilities to really um, cohort and, um, and partner with the Department of Public Health to ensure that we are um, doing everything possible to protect this community. And I turn it back over to the mayor. Uh, sure, thanks, Director Bond. <clears throat> I just wanted to uh, remind folks again, um, because it's, uh, it's, uh, it keeps uh, coming up that um, there, as far as New Haven goes, there is no barrier to anyone getting tested. Um, and we've worked very hard to make that the case. Uh, if someone is, um, can, uh, does not have health insurance and cannot afford a test, they should be paying zero dollars for a test. Nobody should be spending any money for tests. Uh, nobody should need a doctor's prescription. Uh, there's one site that requires one, but the health department will give you one if you call our health department hotline. Someone does not have transportation, they can call 211 and go to the CVS site to get tested. If someone has a disability, uh, the taxi service also has the ability to transport people that may be in a wheelchair. Uh, if someone is undocumented, there's multiple testing sites that will, um, will facilitate testing for the undocumented population. Um, New Haven, uh, I think it's fair to say, is at the forefront of um, standing up testing sites and making sure that we're testing people throughout the city and it's, it's accessible to everyone. And it's really important that folks know that because we just keep hearing from time to time people being under the impression that they actually can't get tested for various different reasons. Um, uh, nevertheless, we're trying to make it easier and easier for folks, and that's why we're planning on standing up uh, new testing sites in the coming days. Um, Gage, do you have the mask uh, graphic? One other thing that um, we found there's some confusion uh, on, and Director Bond, you can chime in here too, um, is what masks to wear for what purposes and how to wear those masks. So the N95 mask is for uh, healthcare workers, for first responders, to keep the, those individuals safe from getting the virus. So the N95 masks, they're hard to find. We're not encouraging the general public to buy these or seek them out. Um, they're designed to keep the individual wearing them safe. And specifically, we want uh, the N95s to be used by people that are um, that are required to interact directly with people that are COVID positive. Now, surgical masks, these are the light blue masks that have been given out a lot at multiple different events. Technically, these are single use only masks. <clears throat> and so they're not, supposed to, they're, they're not supposed to be used also to keep yourself safe. They're supposed to be used so that if you cough, like I just did, that those germs do not go far. Um, but these surgical masks are not meant to be used for a long time. Homemade fabric masks. Um, these are the ones that we're encouraging the public to either make at home or, in, uh, or purchase. And these can be used over and over again. They should be was washed from time to time. But these are the masks that we're encouraging the general public to use um, and, uh, in order to keep others safe um, because it keeps in your germs. We're hoping we're gonna, we're gonna uh, put out more flyers and, and uh, because it can be a little bit confusing for people, but we're hoping that uh, people really put, pay attention to the mask uh, usage because it really can help um, keep the community safe and we've seen some confusion out there in the community about that. Thanks Gage for uh, sharing that, um, that.
that graphic. Uh, and the only other announcement that you probably already heard is that the governor has delayed the um, May 20th date as far as the barbershops and hair salons go. So um, uh, barbershops and hair salons, according to the governor, will not, will, will not be um, allowed to open on that date. Any questions? Go ahead, Mary. Uh, so are you getting feedback on how many um, uh, restaurants, I guess maybe restaurants and just businesses in New Haven will be opening on Wednesday or shortly thereafter? So, uh, go ahead, Marissa. So we, we have applications on um, renewals that we have on file um, for those that fall under the category for outdoor um, facilities. And so we will be having a, a plan of inspection of those particular um, restaurants. And so we do have applications that we've reviewed and uh, we'll begin to conduct inspections as of the 20th. Right now we have approximately close to 100 applications and we're just cross-referencing them with the payment to see who submitted for renewal and those will be the priority for inspections. So do they open up before you inspect it? So they, they're not authorized to open until the 20th, and so we will conduct right. inspections starting the 20th. Starting the 20th. Correct. Um, but you won't get to 100, 100 different places in one day. No, we'll be going throughout um, unannounced to different um, establishments to, um, with our inspectors. Right. Do you have a list of those, who those groups are, who those um, businesses are? Um, yes, we know which businesses will, um, have applied. Okay. Can you tell us? I don't have a list in front of me. All right. Yeah. Um, if you could get that list, it'd be great. Uh, I know this is, there's also a separate list of people just self-certifying, which is what the state um, is. Uh, I, I guess that there must be a crossover between the two lists, right? And maybe even more people. So yeah, there, there's probably going to be an increase of applications that start being streamlined. Right now, we have the current approved list. Um, other um, establishments that will be submitting for permitting and other um, processes will then get added on once they meet those requirements. And so right now, you know, obviously that would be um, occurring now. And then we will then be the last resort um, of the last step before we go out and inspect them. Just correct me if I'm wrong, Director Bond, but the state has a self-certification system for all businesses that are eligible to reopen. Right. And that is to ensure that they're abiding by the new uh, rules around uh, COVID. Separately, the city's health department will certify restaurants because of food. Is that correct? Correct. There's two separate entities. And um, any restaurant that wants to expand and become an outdoor uh, establishment will need to go through the permitting process before they come to us. Okay. And so, so as of this weekend, and I don't know if things have changed today, we were asking the state to provide the list of uh, businesses that were that have been self-certifying. Right. As of this weekend, we did not yet have that information. Obviously, it's important for us to know that information um, because if the state is is asking us to uh, enforce and keep an eye on uh, on things to make sure that they're going smoothly, we need to know which businesses are planning on opening. And we do not have that list, like the mayor said. We don't. Okay. Not yet. Right. So the, the hundred that you have, though, already had. This is just a renewal of their. Of their Correct. Work. They've and already now. are existing approved entities that just renewed applications. Okay. So it's, po it's possible all? they may not open on the twentieth. All right. That, that was we can my get you that list. Yeah. yeah. So what we're doing is just cross referencing. And then we will have a more accurate list. My team is working, we're working on that this morning. So I should have it certainly for tomorrow. Right. Um, and it's, it's all food related. It's not, not offices or, you know, dress shops or whatever. Other Mine are all food related. Okay. Director um, Bond, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but can you share a little about our thinking around um, food trucks? And so we are also um, working closely with the permitting department. Uh, we have about 30 food truck applications that are in the system. Uh, we will be conducting inspections for food trucks um, the next coming days. Um, they have, we're just going through the process of going through an inspection with the fire marshals and they begun inspection for that. And so we will then, they'll be ready for our final step. And so our hope is that uh, we will 
provide um, them their inspection and renew their licenses. The permitting department also have special markers um, out in, for example, on Long Wharf, where they will be following the social distancing rules. Both myself and uh, the permitting department co-signed a letter that went out to the food trucks um, indicating the, the new rules um, and protocols that are in place for them to operate. And it's, it's taking a little bit longer for us to get our head around the food carts, um, uh, but we are working on that issue. Uh, there's a, there's a, I, like so many residents in the city, um, uh, people are really struggling. And uh, I had a number of people outside of City Hall, uh, Kyle can attest to this, that were um, uh, very interested in, in restarting their businesses. Um, mm -hmm. And, and you know they were saying you know we don't want a handout we just want we just want to work mm -hmm. um, we yeah. want to make money uh, and they have a real really good point and um, you know we're working hard on that uh, along with a lot of other absolutely things to make sure that people open up safely right. absolutely sorry. sorry I'm sorry go ahead Director. we want to make sure we have a faced in approach and make sure that there's health and safety cons considerations make sure there's proper sanitation um, with the different levels. And so we want to make sure that as we're opening up, we're very thoughtful of every measure that needs to be taken. And so food carts are definitely on our radar. We're doing a full assessment and we'll be reaching out to them next. Okay. You can't help but outdoor dine when you're uh, going to a food cart, right? <laughs> That's established. You check that box. Yeah. All right. I just have one question. I'll just, then I'll just pass it on. Uh, Businesses, I mean, such as clothing stores um, downtown, if they're on the list, um, do they have to do anything special? I mean, it's essentially indoors. I mean, they want to do, I mean, I guess maybe the city, does the city have to go in and attest to anything that's going on there? So the city, will not, our department will not be doing the enforcement of any retailers. They have a reopening guidance. Um, last week, we had uh, several webinars and technical support webinars where we went through the guidance um, with each of the different sectors. And mm -hmm. so they certainly are aware of that um, responsibility. However, the health department is not going to be doing the enforcement of that. But there's right. specific special guidelines for retail as well. That's right. correct, yes. There are specific special guidelines. Right, right. And, and some obviously have put themselves self-certified, so it possibly could just be open on Wednesday. Correct. Possibly. Correct. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Michael. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. My question uh, actually touches on Mary's question, which is for a business of any kind, who is doing the re who is doing the law enforcement um, component of that? If um, say a hair salon or a bar or any kind of business that's not included in the phase one guidelines just says I'm opening anyway. We've seen instances of this all over the country. Who's law enforcement? problem so does that become and so what, what is likely to happen? Yeah, so typically the way the enforcement piece works, it's a collaboration between health department and the police department. So we, uh, we know that there, for example, a hair salon or maybe operating or a barbershop may be operating without being approved. We know that they're not allowed to be open. So then that gives me authority to inform police to just gently nudge them and remind them that they need to close. So it's voluntary closure. Um, there are pro protocols and procedures if we were to have a business that refuses to close that we would have to follow with proper notification. Um, but typically, we just have a police officer within that specific ward just nudge them and say, you know, you're supposed to be closed. They usually apologize and close. Um, but uh, there are some protocols in place that I would have to, you know, put official signs up and uh, send them a certified notification that they have to close. So that is subject to the law enforcement mechanism of each municipality, in this case, the city of New Haven. Correct. Okay, thank you. Local that. enforcement. That's what I meant. Thanks for the clarification. Yeah, and, and Michael, just to add, uh, to date, we've been very reluctant to um, do anything um, other than talk with people uh, about how they should be following the mask and, uh, and social distancing guidelines and, um, and not gathering large groups. Uh, if this becomes more of a problem, and we anticipate that there will be some growing pains as far as the opening up goes, 
Um, but if this comes in, uh, becomes a problem, we'll revisit that. We would obviously um, very much prefer and think it's going to be more successful if um, businesses do their best to cooperate. And um, if we can just interact with businesses in a positive way to make sure that we're keeping residents safe rather than, you know, some police enforcement that um, uh, uh, that we'd prefer to avoid. Mm -hmm. And with regard to businesses testing employees, I know you talked about this last week and when I wasn't on the call, but it, it's the city's guidance or recommendation or advice to businesses before they um, reopen to, to have their employees be tested. I think it's going to be increasingly the guidance everywhere is that people should get regularly tested. And we're providing that opportunity. Um, we have additional capacity at the Chapel Street and Day Street site. Right. We're providing that opportunity to businesses. When you think about who should get tested now, uh, one of the uh, groups that uh, should get tested is people that are interacting closely with others. And um, while that may not be barbers and, uh, and people working in hair salons now because of the change in the governor's um, uh, uh, plans, it may be restaurant workers, for example. And so we are encouraging people to get tested. Thank you for the clarification. Yeah. Let's go to Tom and then we can go to Kyle. Thank you. Um, Mayor, the, uh, the Greater New Haven Clergy Association put out a, a letter today calling for a few things, but one being the calling on the city to open new testing sites in places of worship. You said that you, you'll have an announcement in a couple of days as to new sites that the city's working on setting up. Are you considering using churches or synagogues or other places of worship throughout the city as testing sites? I think, I think we're open to uh, a lot of different options. The important thing is uh, where in a neighborhood or a region the testing site is, not what specific building is being used for the testing. And the reality is that it's, um, it, it, we're looking at a lot of outdoor type of sites, similar to Chapel and Day. Um, and uh, we wanna make sure that the sites are within a walking distance as much as possible for residents. Um, if there are churches and church parking lots that might be appropriate, we can explore those. Um, I think that, that the most important thing is the region where the testing site is. And will religious services be able to resume starting Wednesday? I know that they're not on the phase one list, but what, what would you say to leaders of religious congregations about what Wednesday means for their work and social life and religious life? So, so uh, I, I would not recommend uh, uh, beginning religious services similar to um, many other uh, group gathering sites. Um, people need to be smart about uh, the virus and uh, conducting social distancing and keeping away from large gatherings um, uh, doesn't mean uh, large groups of people going indoors uh, for an extended period because they are likely to expose each other. Um, so my recommendation is to stay the course, um, even though it may be difficult. Uh, and as our number of cases or number of hospitalizations continue to go down, uh, even though frankly our, the number of cases that New Haven is seeing every day continues to, the number of new cases continues to be pretty steady, but as our hospitalizations go down and we get the virus more under control, um, I think that we can start to think about um, these things. But my recommendation is at this point not to. That being said, a number of churches have reached out to us to see if they could um, find creative ways to uh, worship. And one of the ideas has been a drive-in uh, service and we've provided guidance to churches as to what that might mean and um, how they might do that by while keeping everyone safe. Uh, and so some churches in the city have parking lots, for example, and um, uh, could have uh, their uh, parishioners drive. And, uh, there's obviously some complications around uh, the amount of space that's available, noise ordinance, things like that. But um, we want to facilitate people worshiping. Uh, and that's an area where uh, we've uh, worked to respond to individuals that have uh, sought this out to try to support them. Thanks. Um, 
in, in mid-March, you issued an executive order limiting social and recreational gatherings to no more than 10 people at a time. Do you plan on amending that order with Wednesday's phase one reopening? No, and the governor's not, not proposing to amend his five-person order, as far as I understand. So the and governor's order is more stringent than mine. And then my, my last question for you is just a, a response to Osborne State Prison going into lockdown over the weekend with over 100 prisoners testing positive, asymptomatic, but testing positive for COVID-19. And we've spoken a lot over the past couple of months about um, being in prison during this crisis, but it was kind of a shocking thing to see. Uh, what, what did you make of Osborne going into lockdown and that number of prisoners testing positive? You know, I think, I think that there's a lot of vulnerable populations out there. Uh, we've talked a lot about in the homeless population. We've talked a lot about nursing homes and people that are incarcerated is a very vulnerable population. Um, the uh, individuals don't have choice on where they, where they sleep, um, in many cases, who they interact with. And that's a real problem. Uh, and I think that we should be uh, uh, protecting as much as we can individuals who are incarcerated. And that includes testing not only the individuals that are uh, incarcerated, but the, the workers that are in, uh, in the prisons. Uh, we've worked hard in New Haven uh, to, over what we have control, and that is our lockup facility. And the chief has done, um, I think, quite a good job at, at, in partnership with uh, Director Bond and making sure that uh, we're keeping the very few individuals that um, are detained even briefly in the lockup uh, safe and we're keeping our officers safe as well. Thank you so much. That's it for me. Thanks. Go ahead, Kyle. Hi, everyone. Um, quick question for Director Bond. I know that you went over the numbers for um, renewals. Um, does that include uh, new applications? I was wondering how many restaurants are submitting new applications for outdoor um, dining. So currently, new applications have to go through several steps before it comes to us. So I have not received any new applications to date. Um, because if they want to expand like, and get a permit for outdoor dining, for example, they need to go to the permitting department. So um, there's a couple of steps before me. Um, so our, as of today, we don't have any new applications. About how long is that permitting process to go through um, to get to you? I'm just wondering the timeline with the 20th and the weekend coming up. Yeah, so we just went through the a technical webinar route around um, the permitting process and um, it's no longer than 10 business days from the permitting side. Um, and so, you know, that's separate from the licensing side. So once we get it, we will process the application, review everything, make sure the sign-offs are done, and then schedule an inspection. Okay. So right now, the same 100 outdoor uh, restaurants that already have applications are looking to do it again, and no one knew at this point. So at this juncture, we have 100 applications of both public and private outdoor um, entities, and we are assessing who submitted payment for the renewal, and then we'll have a better number for tomorrow. Yeah, they, I had my team working on it this morning. Okay, um, and I think I'd be interested in that list as well if it's made available. Okay. Cool, thank you. Tom, I just had a clarification that, um, uh, so my understanding is that the, uh, the governor's order of five people or less for gatherings does not cover uh, religious services, nor does my uh, uh, order restricting gatherings to 10 people or less. The governor's order of 50 people or less that was previous, that, that was done prior to his order of five people or less does cover religious services. Does that make sense? Yep. Just want to make Thanks that. for that. Yep. Any other questions? Go ahead, Mary. So you'll pass on those charts that you had in the beginning. Um, yeah, sure. Oh, I'll, I'll share those with Gage. You're telling, um, right. Okay. Is that in uh, Director Bond, you're okay with passing along your presentation as well? Yeah. Cool. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Right, good to see you. Take care.